Hello! In this video, we are going to derive several useful expressions involving the reduced mass, for which we use the symbol mu. Mu is the Greek letter that has the M sound, so we can recognize the connection between mu in Greek and the Latin or Roman M letter. By definition, the reduced mass of two particles, one over mu, is equal to one over the first mass plus one over the second mass. And we can derive a sometimes more useful way of writing the reduced mass directly by noting that if we're trying to add two fractions together, we have to find a common denominator. So the common denominator that we would like to use would be m1 times m2. If we do that, this first fraction is um, m2 over m1, m2. And then the second fraction is going to be m1 over m1 times m2. And we could simply rewrite this because uh, the masses m1 and m2 are simply whole numbers, so the order does not matter. So we can write them as m1 plus m2 divided by m1 times m2. So this gives us the, uh, the inverse of the reduced mass. And then you take the reciprocal of each side to see that the reduced mass is going to be m1 times m2 over the sum m1 plus m2. What is a useful thing to do at this stage is to show that the units of the reduced mass are what we'd expect them to be. So for example, let's assume that we're going to write the masses in terms of the SI unit, the kilogram. So M1 is going to have units of kilograms. M2 is going to have units of kilograms. So we have kilograms times kilograms in the numerator. Then in the denominator, we have kilograms plus kilograms. Because M1 and M2 are each in units of kilograms. Well, what does this give us? In the numerator, we have kilograms times kilograms, which are kilograms squared. In the denominator, if we add units of kilograms plus kilograms, we get an answer in terms of kilograms. So the numerator is kilograms squared. The denominator is simply kilograms. So since the kilograms, we're using a mass not equal to zero, we can divide through and we get units of kilograms for the reduced mass. This makes sense because we want to treat the reduced mass in the same way that we treat ordinary masses. And we use the same exact units. For the next expressions that we would like to derive for the reduced mass, we would like to figure out what are the possible limits of the magnitude of the reduced mass for a system where we know the masses of the two particles. So let's look at the two cases. So for the first case, what was called as case one, let's assume that M1 and M2 have exactly the same mass. So we're going to let M1 equals M2 equals just M in this case. So let's see what that gives us for the reduced mass of this particular system. Recall it's M1 times m2 divided by m1 plus m2, but both m1 and m2 are equal to m, so the numerator becomes m times m, and the denominator becomes m plus m. m times m is m squared for the numerator, and we have 1m plus 1m in the denominator becomes 2m. So the reduced mass is equal to m squared divided by 2m. But so long as the mass is not equal to zero, we can divide through by m, and our final result is that the reduced mass for this system is simply one half of the mass of either of the two particles. So if we have two identical particles, the reduced mass is simply one half of the mass of one of those two particles. What is the second case? Well, for the second case, 
Well, it's case two. Let's assume that M2 is very much more massive than M1. So the mass of M1 is insignificant compared to M2. So again, our reduced mass is equal to M1 times M2 divided by M1 plus M2. Now here, M1 and M2 have different values. We simply rewrite the numerator, M1 times M2. Whenever we have multiplication involving a small value, there are no useful simplifications that we can make. But we notice for the denominator, we have addition. When we have addition or subtraction involving uh, small amounts, we can generally ignore the very small amount. So since M1 is very much less than uh, M2 in mass, we can simply approximate M1 plus M2 as M2. So we can rewrite the denominator as M2. But now we notice right away that we can factor out uh, an M2 from both the numerator and the denominator. So we can use the cancellation law. And we realize that we're left with, in this case, a reduced mass of M1. So this tells us in the case where we have two objects with very, very different masses, that the reduced mass is essentially equal to the mass of the smaller, the lighter object. So we see very conveniently that when we have a system that the uh, smallest the reduced mass can be would be in the case where both objects have the same mass and therefore the reduced mass is half of the object of one of the two objects of mass. And the maximum it can be is if we have a small object and a heavy object, it at its maximum could be equal to the mass of the smaller of the two objects. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.